All right, let's take some questions. We have some bring it on questions for you today. Pat, this first one is from Jack who says, is it wrong to use the Lord's name in vain if it's not used towards God? I've heard people say as a way of being rude, God only knows or even passively saying, God save the queen. Is it forgivable? If it's not, I'm not going to make it into heaven. Uh, I'll tell you what, the name of God is uh, Yahweh, uh, which is the hip field of the, uh, the Hebrew word to be. Uh, they, they took the vowels from, uh, uh, let's see, what was it, Adonai, uh, and, and put it together, and they got Jehovah, Yahweh and Yehovah, okay. But the Jews, Orthodox, they put G dash D as if that's something holy. Mm -hmm. That's nonsense. I mean, God is Elohim. It's a different word, and they, they know that in Hebrew. That, that's not what the commandment says. Do not take the name of Yahweh, your God, for a vanity. But you say, God save the queen, that's a prayer. And they're not again saying uh, Yahweh. But I think we're much too careless with using holy names. Uh, for example, the Brits talk about it's a bloody shame. What is bloody? They're talking about the blood of Christ. Really? That's where that bloody thing came from. Yeah. And they use it all the time. And that, that's a type of blasphemy. Now, but, let me ask you this, though. When somebody does that, yeah. <clears throat> if they don't know that that's the origin of where that came from, yeah. are they held accountable to that? Because no, it I seems don't think like so. it's almost like a, well, I, a it, slang throwaway it, term. It, it is, know, and I, I think, but we've got to be careful about that. And I yes. We've got to be careful about using the names, uh, God's name in vain. But nevertheless, it is his name that the commandment was talking about. But nevertheless, I think talking about God, talking about the Holy Spirit, talking about Jesus, talking about sacred things, we should be very, very careful of the way we talk. But the question is, am I going to hell because? The answer is no, you're not because, because what you said you've done doesn't meet the standard. Okay. This is Darla who says, I know we live under the New Testament covenant. Can we still stand on the promises that were made in the Old Testament? <clears throat> Listen, uh, Operation Blessing is found in Isaiah 58. And I was reading that, and I said, well, this is Old Testament. And I said, but I'm New Testament, and I want it. And so all those promises, if you uh, uh, draw out your food to the hungry, I will, and I will do this, that, and the other. I think those promises uh, are eternal, and the promises found in the Old Testament are eternal. And uh, they didn't stop. Uh, the the uh, government of God didn't stop at the New Testament. Yeah, or the character of God, because a lot of those define who he is. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> okay, this is a maca, I, I hope I'm saying that right, who says, is taking birth control, such as IUDs or contraceptive pills, a sin? Uh, I don't think birth control <clears throat> is a sin, although I'm sure my Catholic people, uh, friends, will disagree with me on that. But I, uh, these, let's say that's the Protestant position. Uh, is that birth control, family planning is, is certainly in order. Uh, the, their problem with some of these uh, morning after pills, though, that it's a type of abortion. You have already conceived a child, mm -hmm. and now you're going to take a pill that will kill that, that newly conceived child. That's the problem that people have raised. But as far as preventing contraception, I don't see anything in the world wrong with it. All right? Okay, this is Joe who says, I am a spirit-filled man in my 20s, and I've been praying recently for a Christian wife. I'm white, and I've been strongly attracted to African-American women since I was a teenager. I've even asked God for a black wife. Is it normal to find women of a certain race more attractive than others? Is this okay? <laughs> Listen, from a scriptural standpoint, the only problem is do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's what the Bible right. says. The skin color... Asian, they call them with the yellow race, but they're a little bit off white. Black people, a little bit different shade of pigmentation. Many different shades within the black culture. Indian, they call them a red man. They, we've got names for all this stuff. But I, I think according to your preference and your love, I would just say in certain cultures there is a definite uh, prejudice against interracial marriages. And whether it has to do with Indian or has to do with Chinese or it has to do with something else, you will find a prejudice, Japanese particularly, prejudice. So you're asking yourself to get into a 
situation of prejudice. But in terms of sin, the question is, does the one that you love, does that person love Jesus? And if you're a Christian, you want to be married to somebody who shares your faith. That's it. I won't go into any more about pig, pigment colors, but if you're attracted to <coughs> ladies who are of color, well, God bless you if you can find somebody who loves you. Yes. <laughs> there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong. It's a personal. Yeah. It's a personal choice. All right. Okay, this is Sharon who says, I had someone give me a prophetic word saying that I would be counseling poor, battered women sometime in the next six to 12 months. I have no experience in counseling. What do I do? Do I wait and it will happen in the right time frame, or should I go out and do it? I am totally and unalterably opposed to these so-called prophets who come along and have a word for you. You know, a woman came to John Wesley and said, God has spoken to me. And he said, what did he say? And the woman said, he told me that you're bedding down with a whore. And John Wesley said, woman, God knows me better than that. He didn't send you, and that was it. Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> don't let these people control your life. As a controlling spirit, they're trying to tell you what to do. Don't pay any attention to them. If this is a reinforcement, if God is saying to you, you should, you have a, a heart for battered women, and you want to bless the battered women, and you feel drawn to that, and somebody comes along and says, I, I feel in, in before the Lord that, that God has given you a gift to, to help battered women. That's a confirmation of what God has already showed you. That's a different matter. All right, last one. Okay, this is Tamara, who says, why do Catholics hail Mary? Do they actually pray to her? And if so, why? Well, that's what the angel said, you know, Hail Mary. The Catholics say, Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And it's, uh, it's kind of nice. <laughs> it's a nice prayer. Uh, there's a difference between Protestant belief and Catholic belief in Mary. The Protestant belief is she was the most blessed of women. And she became the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit came upon her, and what was formed in her was of the Holy Spirit and became the Son of God. That's what Protestants believe. The Catholics now teach that she is the mother of God. There's no such thing. Uh, the mo mother oh. of God. They, they say that. She's the mother of God. They, they talk about the Immaculate Conception, that she oh. was conceived immaculately. They've got all these rituals about Mary, and, and there's a difference. That's the one real serious sticking point between the Catholic faith and the Protestant faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm a Protestant, so yeah. that's the way it is. At Christmas time, but I sure love Catholics. I really do love Catholics. And you know, the, the, I, I uh, <clears throat> wrote uh, the Archbishop of New York, who was a dear, dear friend and a good man, and he said, I pray for you every day. Mm -hmm. And it touched me so much. Yeah. He was Cardinal. Uh, yes. Cardinal O'Connor of New oh, York. Wonderful man. What a, well, he, wonderful. See, he wrote me, he said, I pray for you every day. Mm -hmm. But he's probably praying those prayers like, you know, he, he'd go through a whole litany of, of prayers. Well, you, and I do think praying to Mary is maybe what Protestants struggle with the most. You, you know, I, I grew up Catholic, and I, my mother was not Catholic, and I asked a, a nun once in school, you know, why do we pray to Mary when we can go to Jesus? And she said to me, if you wanted the car, and you knew that your dad was probably going to be a little bit firmer about whether you could have that than your mother. Would you go to your mom to go to your dad? Well, that, it, it, it sounds so sweet, but the Bible says there's one yes, intercessor between God and man, the man Jesus. And you don't need inter, inter, intermediaries, but the Catholics yeah. say you do. So, okay. So that's that's a major sticking point between these two communions, and I am not going to get in the argument. I'm just <laughs> telling you the, the point of either one, and may God bless them both. All right.